Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video we're doing another freeze and fuse experiment. I have the same color that we used last time for our freeze and fuse moons that cracked quite a bit. So I'm trying a much more like lower water content slurry. So I have that mixed up and that is the sky blue powder. And I'm also got my hands on on some deep aqua transparent powder. So that's going to be real pretty. And then I'm going to mix up here with you in the video some light purple transparent transparent powder. There we go. And I've got just a little bit of water here in our plastic cups. I like the plastic ones because they're non-porous so I can just use them continually forever. Um, and I have a cup for each color so if I don't use it all up it just dries and sticks in the bottom of the cup. And then I can always rehydrate it later. So there's, it takes quite a bit of powder. You want to be careful to not breathe this stuff in. And so that's five heaping teaspoons. Uh, we can, let's stir it and then add more. So you can see how there's still quite a bit. Let's go ahead and do another one and two and you can always add just a little bit more water or just a little bit more this is about the consistency i'm looking for make sure that there aren't any lumps or anything and here this is a mold that i've used for resin but i didn't much care for i don't much care for how the donuts came out because i i like a much rounder faced donut and these are very like blocky and squared off so i thought maybe since we'll be fusing these it might be it might work out well with glass so what I'm going to do and uh y'all had some great suggestions about testing out like doing like color swirls and things like that so here I'm going to try our purple and some aqua and I'm just going to put it in and then kind of drag twist and then let's go ahead and I'm not worried about mixing or anything like that like cross contaminating between the cups you might be with your work but I'm a sloppy gremlin of a person so here I am and so I want to try to displace as much of the water as I can with glass that way when it freezes, I just want enough water to bind everything. I don't want uh, there to be too much water that whenever it dries, we get a lot of cracking. I'm suspicious that that's what's going on. So I'm just getting another big old glob. We'll do this one kind of a half and half between the deep aqua transparent and our sky blue. And before adding more, I'm just going to drag these through each other. Doing a little bit of tapping with the stir stick to just make sure that we don't have any bubbles. Get everything nice and settled in there. There we go. And now I'm going to do one, at least one, I'm going to fill up the whole tray, but I'm going to do at least one that's just the individual colors, just to see, like to have a control. And so this uses, I mean, I feel like probably quite a bit of frit, but I think that's okay. And again, just keep, I keep adding more glass just to displace. And then we can come in after the water has settled and wick some of that water off. And quite possibly even remove a little bit more of the glass to make sure that, um, that center is exposed. Cause that's something I thought like how there's a little bit overhanging here in the center. 
whenever I was doing the moons, I really thought that, that would be just fine. I really love the color gradient in this one already. Um, but that flashing didn't pull in during the fuse cycle the way that I thought it would, and it left little pokey bits. So this time I'm going to try really hard to have my stuff be as tidy and clean as possible when we put it into the kiln which probably sounds obvious to y'all but that's like a novel concept to me <laughs> to do clean up prep work on the front end there we go Wait, that was just deep aqua. That color gradient's just from the water separating out. Mm, it's pretty, though. Carving out some more of that slurry. Okay. And now we're going to let these settle just a little bit more. I can probably demonstrate on the ones farther to the left that we had done previously, but I'm just going to come in with some dry paper towel and I'm going to place it and wick off that moisture. Well, it's taken a little bit of the glass with it, but I think that's probably not the end of the world. I'm going to use a clean part. Yeah, just touching the edge of it so that we're not taking up too much of the glass. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the center exposed here. And we may be able to just clean that up after it's been frozen as well. Yeah, just using a dry spot of paper towel. You could even, yeah, it's working out pretty well. Just touching it to wick off the water from the surface. And this one I don't think has had enough time to settle. Yeah, if we blot the surface, it takes up a little bit of glass and then stops lifting it. So for that one, we're definitely going to want to remove just a little bit. I do think it would have been really nice with this mold if uh, the center parts went all the way up so that you could use the full depth of the cavity but that'll be all right so yeah, we can actually just scoop some out and again my goal is to have all of this be as nice and tidy and then we can take it and So yeah, I'm going to let this rest. I'm going to take just a little bit more out of here. That way the glass is somewhere to settle to. I'm going to let it rest, wick off the rest of that moisture, and then pop it into the freezer for probably an hour once it's all, like once I have all the cavities filled. And so I will meet you guys back here for loading the kiln. Alrighty, so since this mold completely lacks any rigidity on its own, that's why I have it on this tile, as well as pulling it out of the freezer, the tile is still nice and cold, so it will hopefully help keep our cabs nice and cold. And we can just poke out the center with our finger, well that's looking cool, and then we're going to set our donuts on the... Um, kiln shelf that we've lined with a sheet of thin fire kiln paper by bullseye and I really like that stuff because it gives us a very clean finish on the back much more so than what um, 
like kiln wash or something. Ooh, look at the colors still on that one, y'all. <laughs> oh, I gotta clean out the middle. There we go. But yeah, you wanna make sure that these are frozen completely solid because they will go through a little bit of like a slushy phase. And it's no, you want, oh, and that one broke on me. That's okay. That's what happens when we get slushy phase. So, okay. Well, I'm going to have to pop the ones here on the edges are good, but some of these other ones in the middle, I'm actually, since I've broken them up, I'm going to put a little bit more water on it, like recompress them together and get the kiln, like get them frozen through the rest of the way. And then we'll go ahead and load them into the kiln. So I'd rather them be completely frozen, but I'm also kind of glad that I was able to demonstrate that. So I'm not too worried about if there's any little pox marks on the surfaces. I just do want to make sure that um, the inside circle is nice and clean. Yeah, I don't know why those couple didn't freeze well for us. There we go. Because it seems like all of the other ones, maybe the water content wasn't high enough. So just setting this off to the side because it doesn't make sense that all the rest of these would be so well frozen. And then those couple would just be like blah. So again, more data is required. A more clever artist than I would probably measure the um, <laughs> water to glass powder ratio to see if there's any, you know, correlation there. There's probably an ideal ratio that we should be shooting for, yet here I am. So I'm going to peek this over just a little bit so you can see hopefully a little more what I'm doing. Yeah, that one broke, that one broke, that one broke. That one broke and that one broke. So I'm gonna keep doing our thing until I get a whole kiln shelf full and then I want this to completely dry. So even though I'm loading it, I will be waiting at least maybe, I think I'm gonna pop them into my, a low temperature oven. I like just my kitchen oven just to bake the moisture out of them but I really hesitate to move them. So I might just, do the firing schedule where it ramps up real slow or just let them dry out naturally overnight. So I'll keep you guys posted with what I, with what I decide to do and I'll see you guys on the next step. Alrighty y'all, it is the following day and we'll see if I can find a paintbrush real quick. There we are. To help. It looks like we, we only have three duds so far this one has some cracking as well as this one like this one's the least amount of cracking compared to this one but then this guy over here we actually have a little bit of i'm going to try just pushing that back up onto it and see what happens but we are going to run the full fuse schedule um and i'm so excited to see how these come out you guys well okay correction not full fuse i'm doing a like it's very similar to our fire polish schedule and it will be down in the video description below. I'm sorry I misspoke. It is very much not a full fuse. So uh, let's see how it comes out though. Alrighty y'all, the kiln has cooled to 177 degrees. Ooh, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay, oh my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> I'm so excited right now. Woo, let's get a better view. So I'm hoping that the purple here will lighten as it cools. Um, hey doggy. Oh, I like the color swirl on these ones. There's a little bit of a weird dimple right there, but for the most part, I'm feeling like these are pretty darn good, you guys. Oh my goodness, I am so excited for this. Um, like the shape of them. Ha! Ah, okay, <laughs> and we we actually just got to hang out with the very cool Pro Pool and Drax's mom, uh, friends of ours here on the channel. I'm sure if you guys hang out in our live chats and stuff, um, you'll have seen one or both of them uh, from time to time. We finally got to meet them in person, and we talked shop for literal hours. Um, and I am so like excited 
to have gotten to converge with other creative minds and just make some friends and it was really really awesome but pro gave us a really really good tip that he was he said he was watching a video and the person who was doing the freeze and fuse just put the cabs directly into the kiln, did not let them air dry all the way to avoid the cracking and crumbling and things like that. So on our next batch, if you guys are interested in more freeze and fuse experiments, um, well, let us know. I love hearing from you guys anyhow, but I'll definitely be sharing them whether, uh, cause I'm interested and ooh, oh, I can't wait to see how these come out. Okay, I'll have to give it like probably an hour more for them to like cool down. I don't know. I'll let you know how long it takes, but we'll get a better look at them when they're cool enough to touch. Okay, so it's cooled down enough that the purple is just very, very dark. I haven't washed them, but that looks pretty cool. Ooh, look at this guy. We may put it through for a second fire polish to try to level out these bubbles. But I am really, really pleased with these, you guys. Uh, be sure to check out our Instagram and Facebook uh, page, Back to Earth Creations. Um, links are down in the video description if you want to see these when they're all cleaned up and everything. Uh, and yeah, I just... I don't know. I'm excited to, to try more with this and get, um, hopefully better and more consistent results. So, so if you guys enjoy our tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as get all sorts of different behind the scenes content and, um, coupons and stuff like that, uh, be sure to check out our happy crafter club where you can sign up for our free newsletter and stay up to date about, uh, when we have new tutorials and stuff like that. So all of that stuff, again, is down in the video description, and I will see y'all next time. So until then, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>